1,000 years ago, in the middle of rural Germany, a monastery called Dalheim was home to a thriving community of women. Today, after the passage of several centuries, a group of researchers is laboriously investigating the medieval remnants that can be found at the site. Nevertheless, when investigating the remains of a previous occupant, the team comes across something unexpected. An astonishing secret that has the potential to change the history of humankind. Let us dig deep and find out more. Even with all the knowledge and resources at our disposal today, there are still many mysteries that have yet to be solved in the past. And even though old ruins and long lost books can provide us with a wealth of information about the world that existed before us, there are many other ways to learn about what life was like in bygone eras. Interestingly, one of these paths is the investigation of historical relics and artifacts. According to the finding of the experts, the age range of the deceased woman was calculated to be between 45 and 60 years old. In monasteries like the one at Dalheim, the women who lived there typically came from aristocratic and noble families, which would explain the apparent lack of physical activity. Aside from that, however, it appeared that her skeleton did not exhibit any obvious indicators of infection or trauma, nor was there any sign that she had engaged in strenuous manual labor during her lifetime. This may provide information about a wide variety of topics, such as the deceased person's food and the environment in which they lived. It is considered that the method could have been considerably broader uses in the future, despite the fact that the majority of studies have concentrated on using dental calculus to reconstruct the food habits of ancient humans. A wide variety of particles such as pollen fibers, spores, and microcharcoal have been identified by researchers in the past as being present within the substance in question. At the outset of their investigation, the researchers looking into the dental calculus of the Dalheim ladies were looking for a variety of things. For instance, Rodini, an archaeologist from the University of York, hoped to find starch granules within the deposits. Christina Warner, an anthropologist from the Max Planck Institute in Germany, wanted to take a closer look at some of the ancient bacteria. Both of these researchers were interested in the same thing. While Rodini was hard at work in her laboratory in York, she was taken aback by an unexpected development. She started by applying acid to the Dalheim woman's teeth in order to progressively dissolve the calculus. When she peered under the microscope, she found something astonishing. In 2019, Warner told The Atlantic, Can you imagine the kind of cold calls we had to make in the beginning? In a statement that was published by the Max Planck Institute in January 2019, Rodini mentioned that, at first, researchers were unsure as to what the peculiar material may be. Hello, I'm working on something that has teeth. It's somewhere between thousand and a half and a thousand and a half years old, and it contains blue stuff. Would you be able to assist me? When we started working on it, everyone felt we were insane. Warner continued, we attempted to contact physicists, but all they could say was, I have no idea what you're talking about. When we attempted to get in touch with those who were engaged in art restoration, the response we got was something along the lines of, why are you working with plaque events? However, in the end, the researcher's dogged determination was rewarded with success. Researchers were finally successful in determining the nature of the substance that was discovered on the teeth of the Dalheim woman by employing spectrographic analysis which is a scientific technique that investigates the spectrum of light. It seemed to be some kind of plaque event because of the vivid blue color of lapis lazuli. Its appearance was highly valued in the world of art. Lapis lazuli, a semi-precious stone, used to be broken up and was used as a grinding medium to produce this stunning blue color. However, lapis lazuli was extremely scarce during the Daleks woman's time period. In fact, it may have originated from nowhere else in Afghanistan, save for a certain place there. As a direct consequence of this, specimen of the stone came to be regarded as having values compared to those of gold. Many centuries later, during the Renaissance period, artists would utilize ultramarine to add bright tone to the gowns of the Virgin Mary in many of the paintings they created. Some claim that Michelangelo placed an order for the pigment while working on the Sistine Chapel, but that he could not complete the transaction because he ran out of money before it could be delivered. So the question is, how exactly did such an expensive object end up in a monastery in the middle of the German countryside? According to historian Michael McCormick, the Dalheim woman obtained the pigment through the illegal trafficking of goods. After several centuries had passed, artists like McCormick are quoted as saying that although this may explain how the pigment arrived in Germany, it still does not answer the question of why it had been transported in such a great distance in the statement that was released by the Max Planck Institute. McCormick's comments were included in the statement that was released by the Max Planck Institute. However, it is important to know that ultramarine was not unheard of in monasteries throughout the time period in question. In fact, it was used to create illuminated manuscripts, a kind of richly ornamented literature and features brightly colored images. Gold leaf was another component of the process. 
Nevertheless, despite the fact that the illuminated manuscripts were in the announcement, historian Allison Beach said that many people had, up until this time, presumed that all of these masters were male. This was the case even though it was later revealed that none of these masters were male. However, according to experts, it was common practice for those working on medieval illuminated manuscripts to decline to sign their name on their work, likely as a gesture of humility. Apparently, this was particularly true of female scribes. Many people have assumed that women were historically absent from this line of work due to the absence of their signature on medieval illuminated manuscripts. This assumption is based on their signatures not being found on illuminated manuscripts from the Middle Ages. Radini Monier and her colleagues published a report in which they detailed their findings in the month of January 2019. According to the findings of the analysis, there was just one female scribe. The question that has to be answered is how exactly the ultramarine pigment got onto the teeth of a woman who resided at the Dalhai Monastery approximately 1,000 years ago. The young person gave a lot of thought to the many scenarios that could have led to the presence of the residue, such as the possibility that it was left there as a result of some type of rite that included oscillating or kissing a text. However, suppose the researchers hadn't stumbled upon the pigment in the skeleton's teeth. In that case, we may never have suspected that this community of women was known for more than just their religious devotion. It appears that the practice of ritually kissing manuscripts became widespread in the 14th century, where the remains found at Dalheim were discovered. When all of this is taken into consideration, further research on dental calculus may turn out to be just as illuminating. The results of our research clearly imply that it would be feasible to determine the identities of ancient painters by analyzing the minute particles that have been kept in Tarar for an extremely long time. Both Trump and Warner contributed to an article posted on PHIS.org on January 2019 after it had been published. It also gives the impression that it could trace other dusty crafts using this method and, as a result, show the invisible labor behind many types of art that are created today. The skeletal bones of this woman who was discovered in Dalheim have been relocated. They may now be on exhibit at the Institute of Evolutionary Medicine at the University of Zurich in Switzerland. While this is going on, Warner is looking for past artifacts by examining particles frozen in ancient plaques. He has discovered things like fragments of wool and opiate traces. It is ironic that she knows the researchers practicing decades or even centuries from now may not have as much luck with the skeletons of today. This is thanks, it seems, to the attention of modern dentists who aren't thinking of future archaeologists. She joked about complaining about this to the Atlantic. Ironically, she notes that the researchers practicing today may not have as much luck with the skeletons of today. What do you think about the video? Please let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe and turn on the notifications before leaving. Thank you for watching.